Thanks, Deputy Connolly. No bother. Ken Corda, this bill appears to attempt to deal with the issue of discrimination on admission to schools on religious grounds. It looks on first reading of the bill that there is a right to attend a school and opt out of religious education, and the school has to facilitate that. But I think the bill is placing the onus on parents to assert that right. The second amendment to section 7 of the 2000 Act is, ex is explained as giving effect to the principle that if a local state funded school is the only reasonable sc available school for, that, for a child, that religious education in that school must be severable meaning that religious education must take place out of the outside the classroom. My concern is that this section appears to place a parent in a situation of conflict with the school to assert that right, and many parents would not to be in, want to be in that situation, and why should they have to be? The state, as a body that delivers on the right of all children to receive an education, should make sure that religious education in all publicly funded schools is severable. This week, a Quaid have published a commissioned opinion on the constitutionality of reforming Article 7.3c of the Equal, Equal Status Act 2000. Opinion from three constitutional law experts agrees that the Church has no constitutional right to unconditional public funding for private or denominational schools, and that the Constitution permits the imposition of reasonable conditions on the provision of public funding. While it found that the outright repeal of the section may potentially be open to challenge, and that this may be seen as an excessive interference with the management by religious denominations of their own affairs within private religious institutions. It also stated in its opinion that an amendment to the section could, could be made so that it cannot be relied on by publicly funded schools. It would not prevent religious denominations from operating discriminatory admissions policies in private religious in institutions, but solely make the provision of public funding to such institutions conditional upon non-discriminatory admissions policies. The courts, in dealing with attempts by the Iraqis to reconcile competing constitutional rights, has established a strong presumption of constitutionality. This means that there is a presumption that the Iraqis has considered the competing rights and has attempted to strike a balance. The Labour Party in this bill have relied heavily on the Constitutional Review Group report from 1996, which is 20 years old now, uh, but the, and the opinion from Equit is, in my view, more up to date and deals with re recent case law. For most families outside of Dublin and the major urban areas, there is no choice in what school to send your children to. If I had wanted to send my children to a non-denominational school in Donegal, I would have had to send them to a school 50 miles away. And that would not have worked for anybody. While our local school did not and does not insist on children having been baptised to, to attend, the current system would allow them to. And that's what needs to be changed. I would be inclined to support this bill, but only on the condition that it could be amended substantially in committee. And I note that the government wants the bill to pass second stage in 12 months' time, and that, that is a far too long a time frame. Surely it could, the committee could consider it in a lot, a lot quicker time than that. And I'm not sure how the, government wants to, the minister wants to achieve it, <coughs> um, but it might, it might be worthwhile to have that discussion at committee. But at the end of the process, we have to have legislation that means that no school can discriminate on religious grounds against any child. And I believe that that's what we have to achieve. Thank you very much, Deputy. Um, we now move.